folks, let me get your uh, attention for a little bit. Um, I, I want to show you uh, some painting stuff that some of you might be familiar with, but I want to cover all of it so you get a better idea how it works. Uh, and then we can go into saving to finally see these things probably uh, the week after next, okay? Um, this is just the um, gummy guy, which I have around here somewhere, um, I'm certain. But, <laughs> ah, yes, there's the gummy guy right there. Uh, I want to talk about um, a couple concepts that are particular to 3D. Um, one is 3D painting, and then the other is something called bump mapping which is how I can create small amounts of detail that I do not want to model. Um, I have this here, uh, which is my rough outline shape that's been subdivided. If I unsubdivide, it looks like that. Ah. Um, and I have only the one item right now, so I'm not, um, I'm not gonna go too much into depth about how we actually do the shading on it, which I will do at another time. Uh, but what I want to talk about is this tab over here called paint. Um, there's a thing when you're uh, creating 3D objects, we've talked about this, the five parts of it where you model it, uh, then you texture and shade it, and then you animate it, and then you do cinematography, which is letting the camera work and render it. Um, this is heavily in the texturing and shading part. And the notion of painting a 3D object is... Um, is complicated by a few things. The biggest one being that our images are all 2D and our objects are 3D. So we need ways to translate this. Something about this program that is very good is that you actually don't have to think about that too much to immediately start painting. Uh, I'm gonna go over to the paint tab here and just have this say paint tools down here and I'm gonna click airbrush and you'll see I get stuff that looks like a pretty standard paint program. Uh, I have a color requester down here and some things about the brush itself, which I'll talk about momentarily. Now, I want you to look over here, which is called the shading tree. Uh, the shading tree you look down through to see how different images and layers are going to affect your object. If anything, this is very similar to a, um, the layers panel in Photoshop. Uh, I'm gonna do a quick brush stroke and I want you to watch what happens. Nothing right away. Oh, and then something quite important happened. <laughs> I, I already had an image here called diff color is why that popped up with all of that on it, um, by the way. And I'm gonna show you something. I'm going to delete that uh, I'm going to minimize this. I'm going to head over here. And you'll see I have a couple things here. Diff color, TGA. Uh, I'm going to take all of these and I'm going to delete them. Yes. Okay. I'm going to go back here. And this should eventually go. Let me just delete it from here. Delete, delete, delete. Okay. Uh, we're going to try that. We're going to delete that again. Uh, delete, delete, delete. <sighs> Good. Now, I'm hoping, yes, that I have a clean image. Uh, diff color one. Uh, if I click this actually, it should give me an example of it. This is this image that I've just made. Whenever you click paint, you create this image, which um, has some default settings to it. Um, it is a 2K image, I believe. Let me double check that. Uh, properties. Uh, details. Of course it's not there. I wonder why it won't tell me about, you know what I'm going to do um, just to show you what it is. I'm going to double click it and I think it's going to open up Photoshop. Um, because this is just a run of the mill image. I don't even have to call it diff color if I didn't want to. I can call it all sorts of other things. Uh, for it to open, there it is. You see somewhere or another. Man, you think it would show me some of this information on it. Let me get some uh, image info on it. Uh, information, info, file, info. Man, I'm just striking out with the file info on this. I, I happen to know it's a 2K image. <laughs> 
uh, meaning it's 2,000 pixels by 2,000 pixels. And actually, I can sort of see that here, 2,000 by 2,000. Um, but, no. Um, I'll find you some more evidence of that momentarily. Uh, for now, trust that this is something I can paint. Um, I'm going to look at some of the paint tools I have here, uh, and then we can experiment with those. If I double click this, you should give me a, yeah, file requester. Uh, we'll try that. Um, I'll go over to here, and you'll see it has some, these are called tearing problems, where some paint's getting dragged around places, but we'll talk about that uh, at another time. For right now, let's just be happy it does what it's supposed to do. Um, you'll notice in this list here it says diff color and it says diffuse color. Uh, and again, if I click it, if I double click it, it should show me that actual image that has been made. Um, and I think I can get details on it. Uh, reload image. Somewhere in here, properties. There we go. Um, this is telling me some things about it. What the image is. Um, Somewhere or another it should have resolution, but I'm not going to worry about that too much right now. Um, let's look at some other tools we have to play with. Uh, I'm going to pick this tool over here. Uh, this is a procedural brush, which as you see gives it some sort of pattern. And I'll pick a different color to it as well. Uh -huh. And um, I have various layer controls on it. Uh, I'm going to give myself the property list here, item properties. Uh, and we'll pick that here. Texture layers, okay. Um, these are like mixing layers like I have in uh, Photoshop. Uh, if I invert it, it should go negative. If I turn it off, it should disappear, good. Uh, if we do a subtractive, setting. It should subtract from what I see here. Uh, you know, let's turn down the opacity on it and see if that affects it. Yep. That affects it pretty heavily. Uh, what are our other choices here? Let's do uh, darken. And darken's not really showing me. I wonder if that's the OpenGL that's not showing me that. Oh wow, that's pretty heavy. <laughs> uh, hard light? Yes. You'll see when I do the actual render on these, it's giving me very different results. That's normal. Uh, this is add. This is subtract. And I should even still be able to paint here. And you'll see that that's giving me subtract, so it's the negative color. Uh, if we pick a different color here, uh, I'm going to click foreground color. And I'll pick blue. Why not? And I'll paint with that blue, and you'll see I'll get that yellow. Let's make it uh, normal, and it should give me the actual blue that I'm putting in there. Uh, I'll turn this off. I'll go back to off. So this is just showing me the OpenGL preview of it. Um, and you'll see I have several other tools I can play around with here. Uh, this is something called Image Brush. That's kind of cool. Let's make, you know what? Let's pick a black color for that. Uh, I'll go here, and I'll go um, black over there, and now I'll paint with that. And you can see from whatever perspective I'm at, I can get that kind of going on there. And I can say, huh, I sort of like that. I'm fairly happy with it. Um, okay, let me also show you the size. Uh, this is in pixels, uh, 128 pixels. And you see if I zoom in, I get differing results, much finer results. Uh, I also can change that here. Let's say we make it um, 50 pixels. Uh, let's pick that again. You know what? Since I have that, I'll pick a different one. No, I think I'll keep picking that. And I'm going to wonder where you went. We'll go back to paintbrush. We'll go back to here. Our mode is still normal. Let's try 100. There we go. 
and you see that's giving me a different pattern than everything else. Um, now, I want to talk to you a little about how that image is used. Uh, this is that layer panel I was talking about. This is how the image is actually used on this object. It's right now used for diffuse color. I'm going to say use it for something else. Use it for a bump map. A bump map is a means of making what looks like small detail using an image map. If I right mouse click this, uh, I should be able to find this. Is it under basic? I want to make sure I find it so you know where it is um, because it's not always bump right there. Uh, it's not always popping right under recent. I'm going to hit bump. And you'll see that that looks like it has detail on it. It doesn't, it's the same painting. And by the way, if we go to Ray GL, it should look a lot more like it has detail on it. Assuming the render ever goes to good enough detail on it. I'd say actually it looks better. I wonder if fast is gonna be happier, nope. Uh, it looks better here as a bump map. I can always switch it back to uh, diffuse color and it still has the full color map on it. So. There's no reason why I can't have two different maps. Uh, let's say we make a new map. Uh, I'm going to go image map, new image. And we'll call this bump even. Uh, bump map. And it's going to ask me 2K by 2K, 2048 RGB. I'm going to say OK with all of that. Uh, and I have this here. It's viewing this as a, um, an image map right now. I'm going to pick screw head on this. And you'll see it will pile it up as a screw head sort of thing. Uh, but let's change it into a bump map. Well, let's hope we see it actually as a bump map now. I'm going to turn this off. Check this guy over here. Turn it back on, which I can do with these eyes over here. Well, that's very different. I'm painting in the wrong one, unfortunately. I should be painting in this one, which is here. Um, let me check my Ray GL, if this is gonna give me the bump I want. No, you know what? I'm gonna pick a different tool. I'm gonna pick plain airbrush without any of these uh, tricky things on it. Uh, and I'll pick a simple color here. Hey, Christine. Maybe I'll pick paintbrush. That's all looking good. The foreground color I will pick as white. Ah, there's my bump. And we should see that bump popping up there. Now, this is very important to note. A bump is a fake. It's not really geometry. It just looks like geometry. It's very useful, by the way. You can also use these layers for many other things, which we will talk about at some other time. For now, I just want you to get used to the idea of, number one, the way that this shader tree works, and number two, how you can paint in this interface and get some results out of it. And remember this, you're creating new images when you do this. If you want to use these at home, and if you want to work, you have to have those images. So you'll see that I'm working out of the C drive here. If I look in my C drive, that's where I'm going to find those two images, bump map TGA and diff color one TGA. Make sure you copy those, okay? Okay. I'm gonna call that 